So for the next part of our Garage Band Challenge 2, we need to be aware of the effect that each of our loops has on the overall energy of the piece. First, decide which loop you want to have run through the whole piece, and that will be the one that you build on, off of. Let's call it the seed loop. Then listen to each loop in combination with that seed and decide how you want to build up the piece. You can easily listen to different combinations of loops by using the solo and mute buttons on each track. So I'm looking at my track view. Just a reminder that you get here by touching those three lines next to the microphone. This is the track view. And then I can look at the controls by pulling over the left margin. So now I have the volume sliders, the headphone is the solo button, and the uh, speaker with a line through it is a mute button. So this is probably the best way to listen to different combinations. <music> So listen to different combinations and try and figure out what effect on the energy each one of the loops has. We want the most energy to happen at the golden mean, which is the place in the piece where a climactic moment naturally wants to occur. It's past halfway, but not quite two thirds of the way through. Actually, it's 0.618 of the way through, which is measure 21 of our 34 measure piece. Watch those video links I put in Shobi to learn more about this super interesting thing. So at measure 21, we want all the loops to be playing. Then it's up to you and your ear to decide how you want to build up to that and come down. You can bring the loops in and out and have them play in different combinations. That will create interest, but the repetition of having just five loops to choose from will create unity in your piece. You're going to need to use your edit tools to split things up and copy and paste them. So remember, in order to split up a track, you put the cursor where you want the split to happen. Okay, the cursor is this vertical line. Uh, I'm going to try and split the night drive layers right in the middle there. And I'm going to highlight that loop, double click and choose split, and then pull down the scissors. Now I have a split there, which means that I can make things happen at different times. I can take things completely out if I want. I can copy them somewhere else. Okay, so you really need to be able to do that as, um, in order to carve out your piece. Here's me carving out my piece in Fast Forward. Before you start recording, you might want to make a copy of this so that if you uh, do something that you're not happy with, you can still kind of go back to square one. So in order to make a copy, I'm going to go back to my songs and I'm going to touch and hold and I'm going to duplicate it. I'm actually probably going to duplicate it a couple times just to see, give me more So you'll notice I'm just really working on the climax to the end. So I'm always starting, going back and starting at 21 and trying to figure out how I'm going to ramp it down. Then after I do that, then I might work from the beginning up to 21. <laughs>
you have things arranged in the best way you possibly can, put it away for a few hours or days. Then listen again and see if you want to change anything. Oftentimes when we come back after a while, we have fresh ears and hear things differently. This process of arranging and assessing and changing and editing is really important to the evolution of your best work.